my name is priyakshi and today i'm speaking to mr gaurav uppal and mr abhijit shah ceo and cto at delhi based electric motorcycle manufacturer one electric guys welcome to the chat thank you thank you for having us thank you hi priyakshi hi so uh, abhijit uh, gaurav so you guys launched kriden back in i think 2020 is that correct initial uh, yeah initial initial launch was 2020 uh yeah. but uh, major traction and and uh, the uh, major market entries were 21 correct so since almost two years then but since then you made a uh, quite a pivot in terms of your market focus and now your motorcycles are running in uh, many places in africa including for ride hailing services so uh for uh, to get started i would like to get a sense of uh, your work and your scale of operations in india as well as in africa what are you guys doing and uh, Uh, where are you uh, basically manufacturing these vehicles who are your partners and so on okay so i'll start with india hmm. so in india we are based in noida with an installed capacity of 1000 motorcycles and we will be scaling this to around 10000 units uh, per month by next year uh, but this is not going to be a sole uh, single plant in india in pune also like we discuss uh, we are starting operations for another uh, smaller plant but also to cater to our export market Uh, Pune being very close to Navasheva, it becomes much easier for logistics to uh, be streamlined. So uh, in India, we are looking at about ten thousand units per month by two thousand twenty-four. In Africa, we have a running plant in uh, in uh, Kenya, in Nairobi, with a company called Mobius. Uh, they are partners, and uh, there our capacity is close to five hundred to eight hundred vehicles per month. Uh, this can be expanded to three thousand vehicles per month uh, as as required. a uh, second plant is also going to be operation uh, within within october next month uh, where we start uh, uh, you know similar kind of assembly uh, that also is about 3000 to 500 uh, 300 sorry to 500 units per month can be scaled as required uh, but uh, but the idea is to have these small plants across uh, multiple countries you know which can be scaled up quickly uh, it it gives a lot of uh, advantage in terms of uh, having a reduction in transportation cost in in better after sales service and also you know we add to the local economy by doing production there by doing some manufacturing local components so so that's also a very plus and most of the governments in africa or, or should i say across the world are now more interested in you know uh, building in manufacturing in their own country mm -hmm. uh, so so this is our setup uh, which we have uh, created right now in india and africa and we'll be looking to replicate this to south america and southeast asia as phase 2 uh, 2024 25 Okay, and if we talk about uh, the vehicles on road currently, uh, in what can you give us some numbers? How many have you exported? How many are on road in Africa at the moment? So more than one thousand vehicles are running on the road, uh, mm -hmm. out of which uh, you know the latest batch is quite aggressive because they are for a ride hailing com uh, company, and within three weeks we've already crossed a uh, hundred thousand kilometers. So. Uh, currently we we spread across five countries with a thousand vehicles but what we are doing right now is seeding we are uh, going to those countries they take time to validate the product uh, to create a sense of confidence uh, so now we are uh, adding a, a few more countries there and uh, i i think uh, by next year we should have close to 10000 plus vehicles in africa okay understood and these vehicles like you have an export as well plus you have a manufacturing facilities so what is is it that you are exporting you are exporting the ckds that are being assembled there uh we are doing both so we are doing actually we are doing all three we are doing cbus uh, for places which we start out initially you know because uh, when when we are starting out initially we don't know the numbers it doesn't make sense to have a assembly plant there so what we do is whether it's one container or two containers we send cbus completely built up units uh for for stage 2 where these people are seeing tractions like what we've done in in uh, uh, right now nigeria and again the benin shipment which is going we go to skd so these are semi knockdown kits so we know the basic assembly in tire that these things can be done and finally where we are scaling like in kenya we are uh, doing ckd wherein every component goes separately and the whole bike is assembled Uh, definitely the transportation cost the shipping cost in ckd is the most favorable uh, um, th that that it gives us a big advantage there understood okay and uh, in africa what are the use cases these vehicles are being taken up for are those for personal riding or they are for commercial operations can you give us an insight into that yeah abhijit yeah uh, 
so just coming to that so as you know we you know we've been talking uh, mainly about b2b uh, adaptation in africa right now so you know it's right now in africa ride hailing is one of the biggest uh, consumers of of bikes and so that's where we are also predominantly uh, present uh recently we have uh, as gaurav was just saying you know we have some uh, bikes in kenya which are running on a platform ride hailing platform and we've we've clocked in close to 100000 kilometers in 3 weeks so yeah africa of the focus is definitely a b2b focus because the uh, use case uh, is such uh, having said that what we have also done in africa and a b2b for b2b platforms is you know see uh, our product has now proven itself uh, to be stable over some of the toughest ride riding conditions i mean honestly we've seen some very very uh, unique riding uh, conditions in africa uh mm-hmm. and having uh, you know passed through those conditions now we are also being able to give you all the end to end solutions for uh, these kind of applications so it's not just selling the bikes or the products it's it's the end to end solutions what uh, we are now being able to offer so it's right from what uh, gaurav earlier mentioned is you know shipping the products in what format which makes sense to that particular country and uh, you know infrastructure which is placed there so that then uh, you know having uh, a support for the local assembly plants training them uh, you know battery swapping battery swap management you know having the back end software in place uh, you know uh, training for example you know not only assembly training but also after sales service training troubleshooting building sops and right up to ride, rider training so you know it's the entire spectrum of services which are now uh, you know what we are able to offer uh this helps uh, the segment uh, you know deploy the solutions very quickly so yeah africa's perspective that's that's what uh, we are working on right now and uh, this is the solutions what we are offering as far as uh, the b2b uh, side is concerned right so africa and- is also the- sorry africa is also considering uh, scooters for uh, package delivery which we've yeah. already sent samples in africa so completely b2b uh, ride hailing and we are exploring package delivery which is not taken off in africa in a big way right now but then it's a good thing because we are in a starting uh, position pole position so we are also trying to get our xr uh, you know uh, validated in certain countries right and uh, very interesting you've gone with battery swapping variant uh, in africa so is it uh, what is the rationale behind that so it's 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 a market driven decision it's it's not our uh, choice uh, two things very important the first is the quality and supply of electricity uh, unlike india the african grid is not very mature it's not present also if i am not mistaken i would say 10 to 15% people have access to good quality electricity in africa so which makes charging at home very very uh, uncertain and difficult a lot of places these riders don't even have uh, basic electricity to go through the night uh, for uh, for uh, fans so uh, supply of electricity was one and if their livelihood depends on it you can't risk uh, you know not charging the bike at night a uh, second factor interestingly priyakshi has to do with finance now mm-hmm. uh, you would be surprised to know that in africa the default rate could go up to 30 to 40% and that is why the uh, the interest rates also go to 60 to 80% for for the motorcycles i mean imagine 60 to 80% to curb that it is important that we have battery swapping so that these people need to come the riders need to come to a uh, swapping station to refill or uh, swap their batteries for the work next day this reduces the default rate this encourages uh, finance companies to come in on board finance the bikes finance the batteries because nobody is going to come in where 40% uh, defaults are going the finance will not be there and we i mean we reiterated earlier also finance is going to be one of the pivots of uh, launching uh, evs or, or moving from ice to evs so these two reasons are the main reasons why swapping is the right solution for africa okay and uh, wh- we are also interested to know what is the primary reasons behind your shift of focus to the outside markets uh priyakshi when abhijit and i uh, i mean back in 2018 were discussing what to do uh, that time when we discussed creden as a motorcycle what we realized was after a market research that india africa and south america have primarily the same product which is a robust motorcycle 125 to 150 cc so we did not shift 
to Africa or exports. We were always a global oriented company. And we started together, Priyakshi. We started in 2021. We started in Africa and India together. Uh, what is happening is our, uh, due to maybe our uh, product being uh, very suitable for both countries and Africa not having as much competition as India, we gained a lot of traction. Plus, we were hands-on there, taking uh, the input from people, making changes. So we kept on getting more tractions in a lot of countries. Visary India, where in front, I mean, as you know, the policies, I mean, we've seen fame, see so many iterations. Uh, we've seen uh, the battery norms change. We've seen competition from uh, Chinese companies. We've seen a few companies who are willing to burn money. So we were always cautious. So we, in India, we are not exiting, we are patient. And, you know, we're waiting for the right opportunity. Uh, but automatically, traction is happening more there. So, uh, you know, uh, our focus for the time being uh, is primarily there. Where we're getting much more, uh, you know, uh, traction. We're getting a lot of interest. We're getting daily inquiries uh, from people. So we're we're moving much more faster in Africa right now. But uh, I'd like to add one more point here. Is like as far as India market is concerned. So you know, so we've actually taken advantage of the break which we have got because of the changing policies. As Doro was mentioning about the certification and you know the battery uh, uh, updates and all of that. So we've actually taken that opportunity or that window as uh, you know to develop. A better, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's say an updated uh, platform or uh, and uh, you know, new look model, the sports model, which is already there on our website, um, and we are soon coming up uh, with those models for the Indian customers, wherein you have the sports model, you have the XR, uh, which is also primarily focused for last mile, last mile delivery, but also uh, will be modified for a B two C kind of an application. Uh, so yeah, exciting things for India as well is is on the on the boards for sure. Right, and your of course I understand the regulatory approvals and all that you have in India they're already in place. It's just that the your marketing focus is more towards uh, the African market at the moment. That that is true, Priyakshi. But uh, what we've done is uh, like Abhijit mentioned, the focus is there. But uh, we we have now uh, you know in the past few months. Uh, uh, I mean, looked at the Indian market as well, and we are preparing to re-enter by February. So uh, we we are very much uh, you know aggressive with the Indian uh, market as well. Uh, we've got some more viable products, you know, like a lot of companies are doing, getting entry-level products. You don't always need 120, 130 kilometers range. So you know, to to get to 80 to 100 viable range, uh, why pay for an extra battery pack? So we are entering India again in February with viable products, with uh, sports models, and uh, and with XR. So, so we are we are coming back to India. Uh, I mean, early next year. Okay, understood. So, uh, with respect to you know running the business in India as an electric vehicle startup, what are some of the concerns that you would like to highlight, especially specifically when you don't have a lot of money to burn? Uh, I think I would go first with what we've just discussed: a stable policy from the government be it the motor vehicle act be it the norms for homologation be it uh, your uh, fame subsidy pli i mean just decide what you need to do and lock it for two to three years we actually it becomes very difficult to uh, you know uh, get investments and and make commitments if the roadmap is so volatile and it's uh, you know change the scenario is changing every day so first and foremost would be a stable policy for three years Secondly, what is happening is actually it's the age of EVs. So much innovation is happening. Now the homologation is centered around ICAT and ARAI and, and the backlog is huge. And, and sometimes they are, uh, you know, uh, equipped for the test. Sometimes we feel that, you know, more agencies like IITs and other NADL labs should be introduced in this system to get at least component level certifications and, and you know, uh, simplify the process. Otherwise, you know, just two agencies handling this is, is, is a big problem. Furthermore, you know, these there are so many new innovations can be done with an EV. You know, they can be a four-wheeler, like an ATV. Uh, there can be many multiple designs. But our motor vehicle acts don't accommodate that. So, so we need more flexibility to make more innovative products. Uh, so homologation, uh, policy stability, and then I would definitely say, you know, to uh, you know, ease the day-to-day -day cash flow, the GST in battery at 18% still doesn't make sense because by the end of the day through GST refund, we are getting that money back. But just taking 18% and then going through a painful mechanism and wasting that time and then uh, uh, returning the money, I think that should be simplified along with 
a preferential GST refund for uh, EVs in India, in which the process and the time are much more easier for the companies. So, I mean, uh, just going ahead with one point which Gaurav mentioned regarding the uh, homogulation process and the backlog, you know. So, it's not just about other agencies, you know, giving certificates, but they being approved as authorized vendors, you know. So, we don't need to redo those uh, certification processes with, say, ICAT or ARI. So, they should have a whole bunch of uh, additional authorized and approved laboratories, you know, where you do component level testing survey, maybe motor, battery components, which can be kind of bundled together for the final homogulation, you know. So, this probably would save time and, uh, you know, resources as well. So, this is something which I think uh, is key to faster adaption uh, in India. Okay. And also tell us about your uh, company structure overall. Have you raised any money? Uh, what what you guys, what, what is your background also uh, that, uh, you know, triggered you to enter into the electric vehicle space and what is the current company structure like? Uh, so basically both our backgrounds are, you know, we come from business families, uh, you know, technical business family. So we both have technical industries uh, in our family business. And coming from that uh, business background, you know, we were very sure we didn't want to raise any capital prematurely. Uh, you know, what we, uh, and uh, between us, we own the entire equity as of now. Uh, so we've not diversified anywhere. Uh, we are a complete debt-free, uh, you know, 100% owned and a profitable company as on date. Uh, so, what we wanted to really do is have a, a product which is proven in multiple markets and be profitable at the same time, you know, and these were the two benchmarks. Uh, now, having achieved both these benchmarks, uh, we are now uh, at the right stage, I would say, to uh, look to raise capital uh, to accelerate our uh, growth phase. I mean, you know, get into the manufacturing and, you know, uh, accelerating that. So, that's that's our plan and that's where we are in as of now. Yes, I see. And you already told us about your plans to sort of re-enter India in February 2023 with your new product. So, uh, in, in uh, corresponding to that, what kind of uh, upgrades or what kind of updates are you planning for your manufacturing capacity? Uh, definitely bigger plants. We are also incidentally adding a mid-drive motor. So, we had uh, hub motors right now. So, we are okay. adding uh, mid-drive motor options to both uh, motorcycles. Uh, we're looking at a bigger plant, definitely, and we are scaling operations. So, I mean, everything around the uh, supply chain uh, to, to the manufacturing, to the people. So, we are ramping up all, all sectors, all segments. Right. So, and, and as Gaurav said, you know, we're basically having, uh, you know, we're going to split the capacity between two plants right now in Noida and Pune. So, that's for a better outreach to the market. I mean, Pune is more central and we all know that Pune is a accomplished auto hub, uh, you know, so even sourcing of uh, parts, uh, you know, is easier. So that's that's the broad idea of, of uh, how we're going to expand and uh, reach out to the market. Okay. Sounds very good. Thank you so much, Abhijit, Gaurav, for your time. And I wish you the very best in your endeavors. Thank you, Priyakshi. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Priyakshi.